We appear to have more Assassin's Creed Valhalla information courtesy of an interview conducted by the ones who came before, which was with game director Eric Baptizat, whose name I butchered, but I do that all the time, don't worry about it. I'll leave a link to the article in the description because in the end of the day I don't want to read out every answer to every single question because some of it frankly isn't necessarily relevant and also it gives you a reason to actually read the initial interview. I will be leaving a link in the description if you want to go ahead and check it out for yourself. And with that said, let's get cracking. The first question in this article worthy of note is about social stealth. Assassin's Creed Valhalla brings back social stealth and adapts it in a new way. What tools are available to players who wish to approach this game from the stealth perspective? The response to this is, as a viking during this time period, Eivor is not welcome into the towns and villages of England. The cloak you can wear allows you to pass undetected within the crowd and avoid guards' attention. When using your cloak, you have as well a variety of tools at your disposal. Eivor can use civilian workstations to stay undetected when a guard patrol comes nearby. You can trick drunkards to create chaos and lure guards away from their position. And the last tool is a reference to the first Assassin's Creed blending into crowds in order to pass gatekeepers unnoticed. It's never not going to be good to have social stealth back and it's great to see that it won't just be a re-implementation, it will be a new take on social stealth as well so there'll be new features for us to discover when using it. But for the most part the answer to this question doesn't give us any new information really. The next question is how does Odin's sight differ to traditional eagle vision? And the response to that question is... Odin's sight represents Eivor's perception of your surroundings. It's a mix between your intuition and your perception of what is around you. It's like a sixth sense you can trigger at any time to highlight momentarily the nearby opportunities and dangers. So to simplify what all of that means is, Odin's sight is essentially Eivor's instincts. If this is a variant of Eagle Vision, I'm not entirely sure if I'm a fan of the idea of it being referred to as a sixth sense, because as we know, Eagle Vision is more accurately described as a combination of all five senses as opposed to a sixth one, but I guess the quirks of Assassin's Creed lore are kind of lost on me these days considering we have a controllable bird. I guess the sixth sense lies in what you can do with that eagle vision. For example, if you can identify friend or foe, what other sense would help you do that? But based upon what I've seen of Odin's sight working, it appears to be an Animus Pulse sort of variant that has some eagle vision characteristics. But whether or not eagle vision or Odin's sight is actually the sixth sense has been convoluted a little bit by Assassin's Creed lore courtesy of Odyssey, and it bothers me far more than it should. The next question is an interesting one. What abilities slash skills are available for Sunin, the Raven Companion, and how does the mechanic differ to what we saw in Origins and Odyssey? And the answer is, Sunin is Eivor's everyday companion. You can teach Sunin new tricks through the ability systems so that she can help you in fights, distract or lure enemies and even attack them. The player can at any time look at the game from the Raven's perspective. This will highlight the most important activities and rewards in the Raven's vision. The player can also trigger the Raven's stationary flight to use the bird's eye view and spot more elements to collect like chests, crafting minerals or animal presence. So for the most part it appears to be the same as Origins in Odyssey then, there's no real distinction for it there, barring the fact that maybe there will be skills that we can unlock for Sunin, but I guess there were some skills that you can unlock for Senu slash Icarus anyway, such as Eagle Harass, whether that differs is yet to be seen, however seeing the mechanics in practice I can tell you that the big difference between Sunin and Senu and Icarus is you're forced to use Sunin a far lot less. As a result, the mechanic will feel a lot less tired, and gameplay will feel far less restricted when we aren't forced to use some bloody bird mechanic all the time. The next question is one that sort of teeters onto immersion features. Can Eivor eat, drink, sleep and bathe? And the response is, in fact, Eivor can nearly do all of that. Eating is becoming a very important element as you'll need to eat food to regain some health. Collecting berries or hunting animals for food is essential for your survival. You can also eat mushrooms in the wilderness, but there could be some risks there. Ooh, magical mushrooms. Can't wait. <laughs> wait, hang on, is this actually suggesting that we can either get high or poison ourselves? I'm not entirely sure which it means. I presume it means we can poison ourselves, but you never know. Eivor can also sleep in the settlement to regenerate some health and wake up later in the day. In the settlement and in cities and villages, you'll be able to drink and even participate in some drinking challenges. Like, I guess, the classic drinking competition where you can see who can drink the other under the table. The only element you cannot do is bathe, but if you feel the need to refresh yourself after a fight, you can jump at any time in water and it will do the job of removing all blood spatters on you. I'd imagine that those blood spatters will likely disappear over time as well, but I don't know. But the whole point of having these immersion features is... 
To add an aspect of authenticity to the world, it makes you feel a bit more immersed in it. It would also be a really neat feature if Eivor could set up camp like in the wilderness and just sleep there, that would be pretty nice. England isn't exactly tiny, it's not massive to the point where you look, oh god, look at the size of that place, no, but you'd still, as a travelling viking, be hard pressed to find yourself sleeping in the same bed every night. So what I'm gathering is these features aren't necessarily there for the sake of immersion as opposed to just stuff to do in the world. The next question, in my opinion, is a very important one. Can the hidden blade be used in combat as we saw in the earlier games like Assassin's Creed 3 and 4? The answer being, the hidden blade cannot be used as a single weapon in combat. Our combat system puts the focus on the dual wielding possibilities and allows the player to experiment with a large variety of weapon combinations by deciding which weapon you put on your right or left hand. You can even create some unique fight strategies by playing, for example, with one shield in each hand. You quite possibly noticed how the answer wasn't an outright no, you can't use the hidden blade in combat, you simply cannot use it as your only weapon. It would appear as if, however, if you don't equip a weapon in your offhand slot, you can use it to attack enemies with the hidden blade in combat. It looks like you're incredibly passionately giving somebody the middle finger, but most importantly, based on the footage that we can see of it, it also looks incredibly awkward to use, to the point where it will be quite hard to adapt into combat and will therefore likely probably not be too much fun at all. As you can see, it has really short range, and even when your foe's right in front of you, there's no promise that it'll actually hit. It's also the same animation over and over again, which means it's just there to remind you that nothing's equipped in that slot as opposed to being actually effective in combat. So I guess the short answer to the question is yes, you sort of can, but the long answer is of course, no, not really. I would love to see Hidden Blades be usable as a combat feature at some point in the future, in a similar way to how they were before, but I never expected Valhalla to do that anyway, so the fact that we can just stab people with the Hidden Blade while in combat combat is a plus because I didn't even think we'd be able to do that. But don't get it twisted, it's not Hidden Blade combat. The final question worthy of note is about the Feign Death ability. When can the Feign Death ability be used and how does it work? To which the response is, the Feign Death ability can be used anytime once you have acquired it. It will make Eivor fall to the ground and fake death. You can use it anywhere, in the middle of the fight, in the street, even alone in the wilderness if you want, outside of the strategic advantage to escape a fight or to lure an enemy toward you to assassinate them. The fun part of this ability is to play with enemies and civilians' reactions. Be careful though, as you may not be able to fool somebody twice. So I guess the Feign Death ability is basically, play dead, just lay on the floor, and play dead. I guess this can be used in several different ways. For example, you can use the crowd's reaction to change the parameters of the mission, maybe. Possibly you could draw a target towards you as they'll want to investigate. Maybe you can even use it as a means to escape combat, or as an alternative to a hiding spot. After all, nobody suspects the dead guy. But I suppose if you use it and then move and then use it again on the same guard, they'll start to notice that that's the same dead guy, maybe that guy's not dead. And so I guess it becomes very important that you don't overuse a feature like this because guards will grow wise to you. And so I guess it's one of those features that it becomes very important to use sparingly. Either way, I'm sure the Fane Death ability will open up plenty of opportunities in stealth. <sighs> And that concludes all there is to talk about today. Of course, be sure to let me know what you think about all this information down in the comment section, and check out the original source, there will be a link in the description. Thank you all for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to go ahead, leave a like, subscribe, share the channel with your friends and all that wonderful stuff, that would be fantastic. And with any luck, I'll be seeing you all very soon with another video at some point. But until next time, goodbye.